It's very hard to impress me. I was at my lowest of lows when I met Mason. I'd felt I wasn't cared about by my family and I had a toxic friend group. I had depression for a few years then and had tried to kill myself multiple times. I decided this time I wouldn't fail. I planned to hang myself in my room at 2 a.m. on January 1st of 2019. I felt I had no reason to live. I didn't want to live. And then I met Mason. Me and Mason had been in the same grade and same school for three years then, but never really knew each other except for this one point us and my friend Regina vented our issues under a tree near the end of seventh grade. Then a boy named Zane switched into our honors English class, and while me and Mason talked a bit because I sat in front of him, Zane cracking jokes gave me the opportunity to look back a lot more and we all talked. Me, Mason, and Zane also had the same study hall period and would sit together at our own table. We all hung out so much that they eventually became my best friends and I let them read my diary. Mason emailed me one day basically saying that if I ever wanted somebody to talk to about depression and anxiety, he was there for me, and that he suffered from those same mental illnesses as well. I finally felt understood and, for the first time in a while, not alone. I drew channel art and a profile picture for his YouTube channel I eventually redrew and developed feelings for him. The problem being, I was an established lesbian at the time. I had only loved one person before, and they were, at the time, female. I noticed some guys look attractive to me, like famous people, and I'll <coughs> mark a liar, but brush it off and ignored it. I didn't want to be bisexual because my mother and grandmother were a bit homophobic at the time and wanted me to at least have the capacity to be attracted to the opposite sex and be bisexual. My older sister was also bisexual, and I was often teased about copying her, and I didn't want to do that. But the feelings for Mason got stronger, realer, more intense. I couldn't ignore them. So I finally decided to reach out to him and Zane for help. I wrote about my suicide plan, and Mason was the most concerned. Once he had finished reading it, he wrote a note in it for me, begging me not to kill myself, and that it was going to get better. And how it was going to get a lot better. Zane, though, realized I briefly mentioned a crush in the entry and leaned over to me during the study hall while Mason was writing and quietly whispered, Is it him? He glanced at Mason. Anxiety rose in my chest and I sort of growled at him, Shut up. <laughs> Zane smiled and his wise eyed him, but he didn't say anything to Mason in that moment. Keywords, in that moment. <laughs> Eventually, I keep telling more and more people because I honestly just wanted to tell Mason and didn't care about keeping it secret anymore. I remember telling Regina, and she smiled approvingly at me. Not a bad choice, she said. I also remember telling a friend named Brandon. He was in the same Algebra 1 class as me and Mason. I gave him the hint that the crush was in the Algebra class and that his name started with an M and Mason was the only person in the class that started with an M. Brandon didn't figure it out. <laughs> So, assuming he wouldn't be able to, I threw in another hint after he begged for one. I told him that the crush's last name started with a T. And Brandon's series of facial reaction was this. I eventually told a friend who I will not name because I hate her with every fiber of my being now, and she found Mason's Hangouts account and asked if she liked anybody. Mason replied that he did, but he wouldn't give any names, and since my online name is the Tan Tiger, and the friend and Mason both knew this, the friend asked, Is it perhaps a khaki-colored tiger? Mason said yes. Because I thought that it was hilarious, and I still do, I posted on Google+, Plus, we will never forget you, Google+, Plus, that a friend had called me a khaki-colored tiger. Mason saw this post, and sent a screenshot of it to me, saying, Oh, so she told you. Panic mode. I might have been having a small anxiety attack, but I sort of replied, uh, yeah, and hoped for the best. It was very awkward, but we basically asked if we were dating now and agreed to. That was be- Oh my god, I can't speak English. That was the best thing to have ever happened to me. I happily canceled my suicide plans. I didn't know then that the day I planned for it was his birthday. Yes, his birthday is January 1st. It's- Easy to remember, at least. <laughs> I remember the day Mason walked into study hall after briefly leaving to go to his locker and he handed me the stuffed animal. It was a rainbow llama and just seeing him hand it to me and hearing him say, I got this for you, made me the happiest girl in the world. 
Zane also enjoyed the present for that period because he kept making a bass boost sound and kneading it off the table with the back of his hand jokingly while I loudly protested and Mason just laughed. <laughs> Mason also explained that he believed it was a cat and that's why he got it for me and I love cats, but his dad believed it was a llama so his dad wanted him to say, I know you like cats, so I got you this llama. <laughs> I love this thing, and I still have it, along with many other stuffed animals Mason has got me. The first week or so of owning the llama, I would cuddle with it whenever I could and also smelled it, because it smelled like Mason due to being at his house for the weekend and also being hidden in his hoodie pocket before he handed it to me. I'm weird, I know. <laughs> I also remember the first time we told each other I love you. We were on a call, and he was about to go to bed. That same friend from earlier told me he was going to say something but didn't tell me what. I remember around this time wanting to tell him I love him too, but was too anxious to. He was about to go to bed, and right before he got off the call, he said quickly, I love you, and left the call. I audibly gasped and messaged him right after, saying I love him too. We both couldn't stop smiling for ten minutes. I also remember the first time me and Mason kissed. It was a winter day, both of us with giant coats on. There were a few splotches of snow on the ground left over, and the air was cold and crisp. He hinted earlier that he was going to do what he did last time, but more, in reference to him kissing me on the cheek. I knew it was- I knew, <laughs> I knew what it was, but played dumb. I walked out with some of my friends, quote-unquote, you know, some people from that toxic friend group, and Mason was waiting outside for me, as usual, with Zane and two other friends named Connor and Aiden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said later that they were there in case I broke up with him for it, and he had a panic attack. He was obviously very nervous as he walked up to me and said, I'm going to do this, okay? I barely had time to respond before he leaned in and kissed me on my lips. It was probably only a few seconds in reality, but it felt like years. Everything around us suddenly disappeared. All that was there in that moment was Mason, and it was amazing. I was so incredibly happy and a bit stunned despite knowing what he was going to do. When I finally opened my eyes and we pulled away from each other, our friends were gone without a trace except a wet splotch on the sidewalk from Connor's water bottle. Water bottle! <laughs> I can speak English, I swear, because his joke back then was splashing it everywhere and screeching at the top of his lungs. Connor is a little weird. Me and Mason hugged afterwards, and I was laughing out of pure joy. I think I said something along the lines of apologizing for having no idea how to kiss a person. <laughs> Mason held me to him tightly, and I could feel the happening <laughs> <laughs> happiness radiating off of his body. It was amazing. Mason and I have been dating for eight months at the time of me writing the script for this animation, and... One month before nine months by the time I'm <laughs> recording this voiceover. <laughs> I'm very productive, I swear. <laughs> um, I couldn't have gotten over my depression, anorexia, self-harming tendencies, trust issues, family problems, insomnia, hallucinations, and in some situations, social anxiety without him. And Mason, since I know you're watching this, here's my message to you. I love you so much. You are the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I couldn't have gotten this far mentally without you. You've brought me so many amazing friends, and so much genuine love that no day goes by that I ever have a genuine, serious suicide or even self-harming thought. I adore everything about you. I adore your hair, your eyes, your everything, especially your eyes. They're the perfect color. I love your little smile you try to force back, and I'm the happiest when I'm cuddling you. You calm me and cheer me up more than anyone I've ever met. Today, I promise to be with you through everything, no matter what happens. We've been through horrible shit together and been brought down, but we picked each other back up and defeated our enemies effortlessly. Any attempt to try to tear us apart has only made us stronger and closer. I'm almost glad people try. And you try to impress me. A lot. <laughs> you love bragging about everything. You're good at and how you're so strong and how you used to play football and everything and i can see through it i just kind of laugh at you again it's hard to impress me but you found me at my lowest i've ever been if i was at the bottom of a ditch in that sense you dragged me up through the brambles and refused to stop no matter how much i complained then you bandaged me up and kissed me on the forehead you picked me up 
at my lowest of lows and brought me to the best I've ever been in my entire life. And that is impressive. I love you, baby. Happy birthday, happy new year, merry Christmas, and happy one year.